We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, uh, a bit of a background to our conversation this morning. The Central Bank of Nigeria, that's the CBN, has raised the interest rate to 17.5% from 16.5% to tame rising inflation. The Monetary Policy Committee, that's the MPC, of the Apex Bank announced the decision on, uh, I mean, at the end of its recent Monetary Policy Committee meeting, where the CBN Governor Godwin Emefili chaired the meeting. According to him, the MPC noted that although the inflation rate moderated marginally in December, the economy remained confronted with risks of high inflation with adverse consequence on the general standard of living. Now, one member voted to increase the monetary policy NPR by 150 basis points, four members by 50 basis points, and seven members by 100 basis point. Well, in summary, the MPC voted to raise the NPR to 17.5%. In addition, the committee also voted to uh, retain the cash reserve ratio at 32.5% and keep the liquidity ratio at 30%. Joining us this morning to discuss these and make sense is Frank Eliaya, uh, editor of Business Day. It's good to have you join us this morning, Frank. Yes, um, good morning. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. All right, so quickly, let me share your thoughts on what you make of this development. I mean, the decision of the MPC committee increasing this. Uh, this is the highest, you know, 21 years now, uh, from 2001, uh, when we had 20.5% increase. What are your thoughts? So, essentially what we are seeing is uh, an attempt by, this, uh, by the CBN to rein in um, inflation um, that um, has affected the economy um, massively. Every sector of the economy has been affected and uh, um, for some reason, um, towards the tail end of uh, this administration, the, uh, uh, the government appears to be um, aggressive in trying to do something about uh, the inflation. So what we're seeing is uh, um, a top balancing act um, to see how they can bring down um, the surge in inflation, which is at uh, 21%. Uh, actually, uh, um, it dropped last month. And then uh, maybe we we're also expecting it uh, to drop in uh, February. Um, but that's a prediction anyway. Um, and it is, it's based on the uh, whole uh, policies, the latest policies that the uh, CBN has uh, issued. As, for example, the uh, narrow um, redesign and uh, other uh, policies, um, the cash withdrawal policies as well. So um, this is also part of it to ensure that uh, inflation comes down. But uh, on, on the other hand, what I'm also thinking is that um, it, it, it's not taking into consideration the impact on businesses um, generally, uh, because if you're raising the interest rates, what you're in essence saying that um, businesses um, will have to um, find other means to get loans, to get credit, um, because in increase means that banks are going to also increase the rate at which they lend to businesses. Um, the actual lending rates right now, um, from the 16% that it was before, uh, is that uh, 30% banks, some banks are lending at 30%. At now, if you're increasing it to 17%, what, what that means is that some banks are going to increase also um, the actual lending, uh, the actual lending rate that they give, which might now go to maybe about 33%, um, and that's not good for businesses. So I, I, I think it's a missed signal somehow, um, if you look at it. Uh, I, I would have also expected that if you're, in, if you're increasing the interest rate, you also do something about the Treasury bill rates and also the bond rate, which has uh, gone down from about 40% to 8% now. So um, what, what that would have done is that if you're, taking, if you're taking out money from the system, you're also giving an incentive for people to bring in money into the system. Um, that's, that's how somehow you, you tend to balance it. Hmm. 
but what, what are your thoughts on, on the um, inverse, inverse uh, action or the, uh, the increase in the, in the rates by 100 basis point, despite the dip in the uh, rate of inflation in the country, moving from 21.47%, uh, like you earlier said, to 21.34% uh, in November, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Um, does this dip in, in, in inflation, um, which is a first... Uh, in a long time, maybe in, in about 11 months, does this, uh, should this have, you know, led to uh, maybe a maintenance of a, the former interest rate or even a reduction? Or you think it maybe should have even been increased to consolidate on the gains recorded in November? So there are two things. First of all, um, what our analysts were expecting was a hope. Um, it, um, because of uh, the, um, the the impact of inflation on the market already, so people were expecting that um, the CBN will likely hold, but um, they didn't do that. And what that means now is, like I said before, that businesses are going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot more pressure on uh, businesses, you know, and. What I think is that um, inflation dipping last month wasn't necessarily a result of, uh, um, wasn't 100% a result of uh, the policy that the CBN uh, brought into place. Um, it's also a, a matter of a market flux, uh, fluctuation, um, what's happening at the global market space, you know, so oil deep down, you know, so, and um the exchange rate also is, is impacted you know so not necessarily that we are addressing the fundamentals the fundamentals are being the cost of production okay um you want you want to address the problem from the roots and not just from from the middle or from from the top you know you want to go down to the roots and ask yourself what exactly led us to this place where we are. It is a function of not having electricity um, available for businesses. It is a function of not having adequate infrastructure that businesses can leverage. It is a function of um, not having um, sufficient funding uh, for businesses. So it is a function of different things that are wrought in the system is a function of the high cost of governance that we are running, is a function of the dysfunction in the, in the political system, is a function of uh, um, not having the kind of leadership that is uh, um, proactive enough to take um, the kind of steps that uh, creates the enabling environment that businesses need to thrive. So, um, we can we can bring um, the MPC can do all of this. The CPN Frank. can bring in the yes. Yes, uh, I, I like us to also look at you know the reason for I mean the reason why the MPC decided uh, to increase the interest rate. Now some of it was that they made mention to the factors responsible for inflation. They talked about energy, petrol scarcity, election related spending, and what have you. But, uh, you know, these are some of the factors that are triggering the increase. And for food inflation, we know that that's a different conversation entirely. But my question is, which of, you know, this problem uh, will the higher interest rate, that 17.5% address? Will it address the issue of energy, election-related spending? Which of these issues would this interest rate, you know, address? Um, maybe... Maybe inflation, you know, marginally inflation, you know. But I, um, like I said, if if you want to bring down inflation drastically, um, you you need to address the fundamentals. You need to address the things that actually led it um, on this. Path. So, so I'm not sure you um, got my question. I'm saying that the factors for, I mean, the reason why the MPC arrived at this decision of increasing the rate. 
17.5%, uh, is because of the triggers that they have identified. They have mentioned uh, some of these uh, factors that are responsibly, responsible for, you know, uh, the increase of uh, inflation, the high rate of inflation, if you like to put. They've mentioned the issue of electricity, petrol, scarcity, I mean, all of that, election spending, all the issues. So my question is now that which of these uh, problems will the interest rate address or can it address? Uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's, uh, the, these interest rates will address so much of it. Um, it's, it would just like scratch the surface. It's not, it's not really dealing dealing directly um, to the root of the problem. Um, let's look at oil, for instance. Why are we not meeting, meeting OPEC um, quota, which is at uh, um, 1.8 million um, upwards? Okay, we have come out, we've heard the government um, tell us that they're going to increase it. But currently what we are producing is at 1.2 million barrels per day. Uh, between 1.2 million barrels to 1.3 million barrels. So what exactly um, is responsible for that? We have been told is oil theft, okay? And just recently we've seen the government uh, um, sort of make some effort, you know, trying to uh, curb this oil theft, all right? But then you and I know that oil theft is a function of, as in, individuals cannot steal oil. This is, this is a, a systemic problem. This is, this is people that are up there who know what they're doing. So if suddenly they have started to repent and uh, um, stop stealing oil and, uh, and they're no longer collaborating maybe with the security agencies, then maybe somehow we might see um, oil production go up. All right. But then interest rates in increasing it, what the CPM is, is trying to do it is try to hit at inflation. They are trying to hit at inflation. Bring down inflation. But like I said, you cannot bring down inflation just by increasing interest rate. First of all, you have not done anything about the Treasury bill, which is going down. It's at, it's, it has fallen down to 8% from 40%. All right? So it would have been interesting if they had said, okay, we are increasing interest rates, and then also we are also increasing the Treasury bills. What that does is that investors will say, okay, um, the, the, um, the rate for lending is high, but also there's an, uh, there is, there's an incentive for us to invest in that economy, okay, which is the treasury bills. They can go that route. Many people want to bring in money, but where, are they put, where, where would they put that money into? There's an election coming in that's on certain street, okay? So... What you could have done, the, um, the hanging fruit there, the low hanging fruit there, could have just been give them um, a higher treasury bill rate. If you give them a higher treasury bill rate, immediately you start seeing money coming in. Because right now, not a lot of investors are very interested in maybe bringing money into any of the sectors right now because they are seeing uncertainty. You have not addressed the issue of, uh, of security, which is holding farmers from going to their farms. You, you have not uh, addressed the issue of power, which which is stopping manufacturers from doing or from producing at, at the maximum, okay? So there's a lot of things that are yet to be addressed. And those things are the things I call the fundamentals. If you just re, um, increase interest rates, uh, again, you have impacted small businesses, which will now hesitate or which will now even drag their feet more to go to the banks to collect money. So you're not even doing the banks a lot of... Um, um, favors right now. They are not being done a lot of favors because they would have loved to um, lend so that they will make more money, but at the rate where it is now, many people will not easily want to go there. And what you're going to see also is that so many loans will be reevaluated because there's a higher interest rate in town. All right? And that will impact the, the businesses that collected it. So somehow it is trying to address inflation, but I don't think it has totally done that. There's also the issue of CRR, that has the credit ratio, which is still high at 32%. You need to bring it down. You need to bring it down so that banks will have a lot more money to lend to businesses. So those are things that I, I would have... So I, I, I see this as a missed signal, because there's a lot of missed signals and... 
is still not clear. I think that's it. Um, investors are looking for clarity. You need to bring in that clarity, even though you're posturing like you're giving them a top, as there's a top tightening that was happening. And if you're doing tightening, I was to suggest that you do tightening in governance. Start cutting down the cost of governance. That part of tightening is not just about raising interest rates and mopping up the money in the system, but start tightening up cost of governance. That also will help um, tremendously. All right. Uh, Frank Elia, thank you so much for your time uh, and expert analysis. As always, we look forward to having you again on The Breakfast. Thank you so much. Interesting. Interesting. Frank Elia is a, an editor with a Business Day Nigeria's leading financial publication. And that's the size of a package. Messi has been quite an interesting uh, one today. Moving from constitutional review or amendment to the, the economy or the economics of interest rates. Um, we look forward to having our, our viewers join us tomorrow for another interesting edition of The Breakfast. Well, that's the size of it this morning. If you missed out on any part of it, it will be great to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Boko. Have yourself a great morning.